Hello, warm welcome to this talk. It's Friday the 27th of January. Now, I want to give you some information from an official UK government uh, publication published yesterday. And I'm going to give you one piece of information from the Autumn COVID-19 Vaccine Booster Programme. The Autumn Booster Programme. It turns out that there's this idea called the number needed to vaccinate. So it's a bit like the number needed to treat. And it turns out that you need to, to vaccinate 43,600 people between the ages of 50 to 59 to prevent one hospitalisation. So 43,600 vaccinations in the 50 to 59 year old age group to prevent one hospitalisation and to prevent one serious hospitalisation in the 50 to 59 age group. To prevent one serious hospitalisation, someone needing oxygen or ventilation, you need to vaccinate over a quarter of a million people, 256,400. And uh, we, actually vac we actually oxygenate fairly readily in hospitals because our, our target saturations are 94 to 98%. And that means we give oxygen to quite a lot of people. So basically, to prevent anything serious for hospitalisation, we need to vaccinate a quarter of a million people to prevent one of those. Now, how does this stack up in terms of risk benefit analysis is the main question. Now, this all comes from this official government publication here, as we say, came out yesterday based on UK Health Security Agency presentation to the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation. And all the data is there. As always, you've got the link. You can uh, download it for yourself and make sure I'm not making this up. Now, the background here is from this paper here. We looked at this paper here a few weeks ago, which is a reanalysis of the original um, phase three trials for the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine uh, on which their approval was uh, based. And let's look at the, uh, the risk benefit analysis of this published in the journal Vaccine, Serious Adverse Events of Special Interest Following mRNA Vaccinations. Uh, full text available free, get it for yourself. Section 3, 4 of this article, uh, harm-benefit considerations in the Moderna trial, the excess risk of serious adverse events of serious interest was 15 per 10,000 doses. That works out at 1 in 662 uh, vaccine doses. And that is over placebo baseline. Now, in the Pfizer trial, things were even uh, worse. Uh, the excess risk of adverse events of uh, special interest were 10.1 per 10,000. That works out at 1 in 990. Combined, that gives us 12.5 per 10,000 vaccinated, which is 1 in 800. And that actually works out at 1,250 serious adverse events for each million people vaccinated. So that brings us straight on to this uh, paper here that we want to look at, this one from the... Uh, UK uh, government. So it's looking at uh, estimated number needed to vaccinate to prevent COVID-19 hospitalisation. Tells us nothing about anything else, just hospitalisation. And it gives us information for the primary vaccine. Uh, that's the, the first and second dose for the booster vaccine, third dose, and for the autumn booster programme and uh, potentially looking at a spring booster uh, as well for 2023. Published, as we say, 25th of January. Now, calculation of the number needed to vaccinate. This is table three. Number needed to vaccinate to prevent hospitalisation for different vaccination schedules. Now, I'm just going to give you a, a couple of examples here. So 20 to 29 year olds for the autumn booster, um, you would need to vaccinate 169,200 people aged 20 to 29 to prevent one hospitalisation. You would need to vaccinate 706,500 in the age 20 to 29 to prevent one serious hospitalisation requiring oxygen or ventilation. So you'd have to vaccinate an awful lot to prevent one serious adverse events. That's if they have no risk. Now, in a high risk group in the same age, 20 to 29, uh, the risk is you would have to vaccinate 7,500 to prevent one hospitalisation. And... Um, you'd have to vaccinate 59,500 to prevent one serious hospitalisation. And remember, the uh, the risks of the adverse events are about 1 in 800. 
So we can clearly see that the risk of an adverse event is much greater than the risk of hospitalisation in this younger age group. Now, this one in 800, unfortunately, is not age stratified, but we know that younger people have a higher risk of, um, of um, adverse events because for the original trials, we haven't yet been given the participant level data. We've been waiting for that for some time now, still hasn't arrived. 50 to 59 year olds, autumn booster again. Um, people that are of no risk, otherwise healthy. You'd have to va vaccinate 43,600 of those to prevent one hospitalisation. People aged 50 to 59 years, autumn boosters, you'd have to boost 256,400 to prevent one uh, serious hospitalisation requiring oxygen or ventilation. In a risk group, you'd have to vaccinate 3,100 to prevent one hospitalisation. You'd have to vaccinate 18,600 to prevent one serious hospitalisation. So let, let, let's, say, let's say the risk of serious adverse events were only one in 2,000. Um, we know it's much lower than that, but you can still see that the risk associated with vaccination is greater than the risk of hospitalisation. Um, that's what the figures are showing. 60 to 69 year old autumn booster, 3,600. That's uh, 27,300 for serious events. So if you're aged 60 to 69 years of age for autumn boosters, to prevent one hospitalisation, you'd have to vaccinate 3,600 of us. Or you'd have to vaccinate 27,300 of us to prevent one serious hospitalisation. Over 70, you'd have to uh, um, vaccinate 800 to prevent one hospitalisation. And you'd have to vaccinate 7,500 to prevent one serious hospitalisation. So even in this age group, the benefits of the autumn vaccine are, are minimal, if anything, over the risk of uh, an adverse event of a special interest based on the original Pfizer and Moderna phase three clinical trials. Now, all of these information is here in detail. It's all there. Do uh, check it out for yourself. That's table one. The one I've just been quoting from is table three, which is here. So um, check it out. It is all it is all there. Now, this really does change. All, all this is based on uh, July uh, 2022. So this is all Omicron era. And uh, uh, to be fair, I did say right at the start of the Omicron era that the risk-benefit analysis had changed. So this is Omicron era vaccination. Other ways you can look at this here. Um, these are, uh, table one is the, the rates per million of COVID-19 hospitalizations. And again, it gives people that have had no doses, one or two doses or three plus doses. So for example, we see in the 70-year-old plus um, who have had no doses, 414 per million uh, were admitted to hospital based on um, based on July 2022. That's Omicron era uh, data. Now, it, it, we can't really compare these numbers. So if we take, say, 40 to 49 year olds, we see that 14.5 um, per million are, are hospitalised. But because the data is crude, we can't really say that. Well, we definitely can't say that one or two doses increases the risk. But th th these are rough. Th these are rough figures. They're in this area: fourteen to twenty people uh, hospitalised per million. But we did notice that there's uh, one thousand two hundred and fifty serious adverse events per million vaccine recipients. So again, we can see uh, a rather unfavourable risk-benefit analysis. A table one rates per million COVID-19 severe hospitalizations. And of course, as we would expect, there's many less hospitalizations there. So if we take the 70 year old plus who've had no doses of vaccine, we see that 50.9 per million were hospitalized. If they've had uh, three doses of vaccine, that's 32 per million were hospitalized, bearing in mind 1250 serious adverse events of interest for each million vaccine recipients. So this is the sort of risk benefit analysis we are dealing with in the age of Omicron. And um, 
here we see that uh, this is based on UK Health Security Agency data presented to the Joint Committee of Vaccination and Immunisation on the 25th of October 2025. And we also note that despite this information, which shows a radically changed risk benefit analysis from previous waves, uh, the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation carried on without modification to the Autumn Booster programme. Um, my question to the Joint Committee on uh, Vaccination and Immunisation is why? And we did notice the other day that this agency is 86% funded by uh, commercial uh, interests. So there we go, change in the risk-benefit analysis. Quite dramatic changes. Huge numbers of people needed to treat and needed to be vaccinated to prevent one hospitalisation. Bearing in mind, one in 800 people according to the primary sources of the uh, the Pfizer and the Moderna trials, suffered an adverse reaction of special interest. So there you go. You can decide which, um, which risk you can like to take, I suppose. Of course, I'm not saying the JVCI are wrong. I'm not allowed to do that. But I do ask the question as to why they didn't modify any of their um, dictates in the light of this evidence that we now know they had on the 25th of October 2022. Find it difficult to explain, but there you go. We'll leave it at that. Thank you for watching.